What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news and updates coming in the form of this week at Bungie. And they don't give us an absolutely massive update today, but we get a small patch note preview of the update that's going to be dropping next Tuesday. There are a few fixes there, and also they talk about the fact that it's going to be Bungie Day. We'll round up some additional stuff about moments of triumph and some of the content we're going to see. Also, Bungie talk about a Bungie Day fashion show and art show with exclusive emblems and things like that. And we'll talk about some upcoming rewards, quests, feedback, and more. So, guys, if you enjoy the video, a rating below really helps me out. But now let's get into it. And so in this week at Bungie, initially they speak about the fact that the Iron Banner is alive in the game. Pretty good opportunity for Pinnacle Gear and all of that good stuff. But next week we are going to be getting a July update. And they say primarily it'll bring a slew of bug fixes for Season of Arrivals. And so for contact events, they're fixing an issue where the heavy hitter's triumph wasn't progressing when defeating bosses. A problem where players could collect and bank 15 motes prior to unlocking the appropriate prismatic recast and rank reward. And then for the weapons this season, they fixed an issue where the Cold Denial and Falling Guillotine didn't offer the two perks in the final column when unlocking the Umbral Enhancement 3 gift on the prismatic recaster. And an additional problem where the sword could continue damaging enemies after the heavy attack animation had completed. And this is actually the kind of bonus damage glitch with the weapon right there. So presumably that is going to mean that the damage output on the Fallen Guillotine has been reduced. And of course when players got access to the weapon we were pretty surprised at how well it performed, especially with some of the mods and builds this season. So we'll have to see how it performs. I believe the glitch or the element that allows it to do damage after the heavy attack has been completed was something that it shared with Dark Drinker in Destiny 1. So a potential kind of a legacy bug with the weapon right there, but it's going to be adjusted and we'll have to see how it performs. And of course separately it's good that we'll be able to reliably go after good rolls on both of the season pass weapons now. Of course we'll have better chances to get the bonuses we actually want having those second perk slots available. We'll see how it affects it next week. But then finally, they fixed a problem where reissued Seraph weapons weren't granting progress to Catalyst objectives for Sleeper Simulant. They've updated Last Wish and Garden of Salvation gear to have Season of Arrivals max infusion caps. And for weekly Vanguard bounties, they've removed Scorn, Cabal, Vex, and Fallen variations of the weekly bounties from the Season of Arrivals pool. And so we're going to see those changes, as well as a few others that we'll get patch notes for on Tuesday. And Bungie say that this will be released to players on Tuesday, July 7th, but they don't outline exactly when the update's going to drop. Normally it would be around reset, so let's go with that for now. Of course we know that Moments of Triumph will be kicking off on Tuesday as well. And interestingly they don't say anything about it in this week at Bungie, but when they close Twab out they do say we'll see you next Tuesday for Bungie Day. Cheers to all of you for being a great community. And also in Twab they say that Bungie Day is a dedicated day for celebrating the community. And we have some fun planned, but until then, here are a few things to keep you occupied as we approach the Day of Seven. So there is a new Bungie Day fashion show. And you can tweet at Bungie with the tag hashtag Bungie Day fashion show with the prettiest images of your guardians decked out in glorious armor and they'll retweet the winners on Tuesday and grant them the Levante prize emblem. But also there will be a Bungie Day art show and so if you've got any awesome Destiny themed artwork you can share that to at Bungie with the hashtag Bungie Day art show. And if you're chosen as a winner there you'll get the aspect of Luminance emblem. And so that's certainly pretty cool and obviously Moments of Triumph is going to kick off in itself in terms of gameplay stuff. We also know that there's a pretty significant potential that we'll get the Ruinous Effigy quest based on the schedule for Eververse ornaments that we know for the season. That isn't 100% confirmed, but it certainly is pretty likely, and so we'll see how all of that goes down on Tuesday, and exactly how Bungie announce and roll that content out. Also though, in this week at Bungie they do have a section about the gifted subs bounty, which is a new thing they've just introduced. So, of course, you can gift two subscriptions to any Twitch streamer live streaming D2 when they've got the official Twitch Destiny extension active. And of course, you get access to a new weekly bounty, and the first completion will award you with two exclusive rewards, so you get the Stream of Light emblem and the Watcher's Shade shader. Kind of Twitch-themed emblem right there, but also a pretty cool-looking shader. And they have some extra Q&As about that as well, so if it's something you're interested in checking out, or if you've had any issues there, they do have extra help in this week at Bungie, which I will link down below. DMG also jumped in with a few extra comments about some of the stuff that they spoke about in this week at Bungie. So 
On the subject of the sword and the changes that we're going to see, players said with the sword mod and charged with light, it's still going to shred. And DMG did say that that is the goal. The sword does still do some pretty crazy damage and will still probably be a go-to for many players. So encouraging players right there that the thing shouldn't be nerfed into the ground. On the subject of the heavy hitter's triumph, he does point out that he believes that players will have to complete the bosses that they've already completed in the past but weren't recognized by the triumph again. So essentially it won't retroactively update and we'll need to run all of the bosses again before we can get the triumph done. But also, somebody said, weren't Bungie supposed to address one of the big concerning topics for the future of the game per TWAB, or did they just stop after Season of Arrivals? And DMG said that they're hitting topics as soon as they can. The team is busy with development, but as soon as they get more info about the question they have, they'll be sure to get answers out as quickly as possible. So, of course, we are going to see quite a lot more conversation over the coming weeks leading up to Beyond Light. And there is also a known issues section. Importantly, they point out that players who finish this week's means to an end quest and don't claim the challenge reward are going to be locked out of next week's portion of the quest. And so definitely be sure to pick that reward up. We also know that by the looks of things, if the Ruinous Effigy quest does drop, it might require completion of means to an end next week. So just don't take the risk and try and get that reward picked up. But also Bungie Help tweeted, and they'd said that the Unfurl the Banner Crucible quest steps will update when players reach the Mythic Valor rank and not the Fabled rank. So the description is essentially wrong for that. And that's the red on red quest, the crucible quest for Season of Arrival. So if you're having an issue, bear in mind, that's how it's gonna work. But otherwise you can check out the rest of the known issues and minor updates in the Bungie blog. Now though, let's touch on some additional stuff, some of it associated with moments of triumph, but firstly, with a lot of conversation about weapon and armor sunsetting that we'll be seeing starting in September of this year, it's safe to say that power capping gear is one of the subjects that's had the most conversation, because there is frustration about the idea of certain weapons and pursuit items no longer being power viable in the game. And Cosmo has said, we currently don't have any more info to share, but we are sharing everybody's feedback on max power levels and the fact that many players in the community do not want weapons or armor to have capped max power levels. He's also said that we've seen a lot of feedback about legendary armor specifically, and that it feels bad to have a lot of masterwork materials invested in a piece of gear that's gonna have its power capped and no longer be useful in the game. So once again, as soon as they have more info, they say they'll definitely let everybody know. And with this kind of commentary, of course, we're gonna get more details about the system itself and the ways that Bungie will mitigate against the fact that gear is being taken out of the game. But of course, to an extent, some players still hope that Bungie will adjust the plan in some way. So let us know what you think about it. Here though, a couple of potentially important gameplay things to bear in mind. The current in-game tooltip for the Iron Banner is incorrectly stating that matchmaking prefers skill. And of course they've recently changed that, so essentially it's pointing out that skill-based matchmaking isn't active in the playlist, despite the fact that the UI says that it is. Let us know how you guys have found that change down in the comment section as well, jumping into the Iron Banner this week. But onto some of the upcoming content. Of course, yesterday we spoke about moments of triumph and the existing triumphs that we know of, including reaching Valor Legend rank, completing some stuff in Gambit, the Lost Sectors on the Moon, Altars of Sorrow, the Garden of Salvation, both of the dungeons for Year 3, and then of course content for Season of Arrivals, and then a series of classified requirements as well. And so moments of triumph 2020 would definitely take a bit of input to get completed. But also next week with Bungie Day coming up on the 7th of July, there's a potential for some interesting stuff to pop up. And we do know of the Empathetic Shell. There's going to be a new kind of charity item in the game, where obviously proceeds for purchases will support the Bungie Foundation. And so we can keep our eyes open for that over the next few weeks. But also just yesterday, something to point out on the front of loot, and a good one for collectors who maybe are missing some stuff from earlier on in the game, but I spoke the other day about the evacuation quest and certain quest steps where we'll speak to planetary vendors where the darkness is strong, and they kind of give us some background context to what's going to happen next with them. But there will be steps inside of the evacuation quest we can see that you can unlock certain Nightfall specific items from those locations. So Anna Bray will drop the Bray Tech Osprey. Asher on Io is going to drop the Silicon Neruma. We've got DFA dropping from Vance on Mercury and the duty bound auto rifle from Sabbath and Song as well. That'll be on Titan, of course. So if you haven't collected any of those items and you don't get lucky with the Nightfall popping up or the loot drop in the next couple of months, then it's worth pointing out that they are going to drop in specific quest steps during the evacuation. They are the year one versions of the weapons though, and in the database they still list being sunset in season 12. So unfortunately they aren't updated versions, but it will be the last opportunity to get them. And of course the culmination of that quest will be the Traveler's Chosen in exotic form. The quest itself could take a little bit of time to get done though, and it's also really a pretty big narrative point 
with everything that's happening leading up to Beyond Light. But for today, guys, that is what we've got to speak about in the video. So let us know your thoughts on everything we've touched on in this one. Moments of Triumph for this year. And of course, next week we are expecting to get the ruinous Effigy quest if we're lucky. That's according to an early preview of the Eververse schedule for the season. That does have the potential to change, although typically it doesn't. So we're hopeful to get that quest next week as well. But if you guys have enjoyed the video today, a rating down below really helps me out. And if you're new to the channel, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. And I'll have all the new info about Destiny 2, guys for new content and that good stuff on the channel. But otherwise, I appreciate you tuning in and whatever you get up to, I hope you guys have an awesome day.